Lincoln's description is only fair to see the source material. Do not, under any circumstance, vote these people with the intent to be a dick. I don't support rich or lynch lobbying, so don't be either. As for the subjects themselves, my video is for the purposes of criticism and entertainment. Take care and leave it. My content is not here to start drama. Please do not treat it like it is. So, who remembers my video talking about the Jerry Shapiro controversy last year? If you don't, to give a brief summary, the Powerpuff Girls 2016 came under fire when a character called Jared Shapiro was looked into in a critical manner, and was then connected to this guy named Jake Goodman. 4chan tore into the character and the voice actor in a Twitter account under the name Be Awesome One collected some of this information, and this shit spread like wildfire. I looked over the evidence supported in the Twitter post and thought a bunch of the evidence compiled didn't add up and did the first commentary on a 4chan thread. And, yeah. People hated it. Honestly, what do I expect for daring to defend a harmless kid's show? Regardless, a couple people within our community hit the video at the time, and, well, that would be one thing. But then a year later, in comes a commentator called The Cam Project who wanted to do a video on it. And if I can just say this, when Karomi and Dale Rockman both do a better video on the same source, there's a problem. Especially since the latter one was trolling. But to be more precise, let's hit it. The links in the descriptions below are only good to see the source material in today's commentary. Uh, small thing, my dude. The link doesn't exist to my video, just your social medias and fair use laws. GG. Doodletones, a very controversial commentator in the CC. If you haven't heard of this person, well, that's my basic summary. She made a video discussing this whole incident, saying how the character in the show wasn't a self-insert. The video was... okay in terms of production, but the evidence is inconclusive of what Doodle and the internet are saying. And during the time of the video too, there was actual pieces of information out there that people reasonably suspect that this dude looks like, well, this dude. Sure, and what's great is I show some of that evidence in my video, where I argue said evidence within there. Uh, take it in mind, I'm only going off of what was said in the Twitter post. If there was any further evidence for people to believe Jared was Jake, it wasn't shown within everyone else's main source of information. And, spoiler alert, this is going to be relevant throughout the video. Since this is old news, I'm going to be handling this in a more interesting way. In fact, this is going to be a first in the channel. I will have a mindset of me in 2017. What I mean by this is that we're going to ignore the actual truth that came to light, aka that article. That article was before my video. And we're going to be focusing on the reasons why this character is suspected to be a self-insert, and debunking Doodle's points along the road. This commentary will be something. Let me keep that little aspect of him treating this as a 2017 commentary in mind. We're gonna come back to this later too. So there's a character by the name of Jared Shapiro who was added to the show and everyone just kind of believes it's a self-insert fan character of one of the writers, Jake Goldman, without really looking at all the evidence that's there. And so here's where I come in because, yeah, this is the same kind of utter retardation we saw with the twerking scene and the no make gusta and whatever fake controversy was out there that was used as kind of obviously a smear campaign against the new Powerpuff Girls. Where should we begin? Let's start with the elephant in the room, the trucking and the no me gusta scenes that you mentioned, Doodle. And before you take my words out of context, no, it isn't about cringy meme crap. It's about the lack of awareness in pop culture in its writing. Not from what I was referring to. Good job, Cam, you're taking your own complaints with the twerking scene and trying to place that upon everyone else who had complaints with it. Because from what I had covered in the past, people had an issue with the twerking being cringy meme crap. The very thing you say it's not. Not cultural ignorance, cringy meme. The only person taking anything out of context right now is you. Of course, that's not at all mentioning how none of this actually matters, as I was just introducing the video by explaining how everyone overblew those situations regardless of what it was. Hence why I never, you know, explained what I was referring to. We are one point in, and this is spelling disaster. For context, let's take a look at the trucking scene. And ooh boy, do I have a lot of information that I could pull up my sleeve. Before the mainstream media normalized it and bastardized it to a degree, trucking was a dance move where you shake your hips in a sexual manner to appeal to one's buttocks. A dance move used by adults in adult nightclubs, for instance. But ever since Miley Cyrus normalized it in today's pop culture, it's no wonder that younger children are using this dance move. And children didn't know its sexual overtones and, well, that's bad. Now, Cartoon Network has an appeal to children, and the main reason why this scene is notoriously hated is that because this dance move is inappropriate for children to see and to replicate. Cool. In the very episode we're talking about, Buttercup calls it gross. Uh, gross. 
showing that one, the writers understand the sexual nature themselves, and two, that even if we were talking about cultural ignorance, the outrage over the twerking scene would be unfounded due to that. Hey, you want to bring up something irrelevant to the table, at least have it be correct. If the writers actually glorified the dance as a good thing, that would be one thing. But with Buttercup showing physical disgust over the dance, it shows that the twerking scene was supposed to be seen as a bad thing. Gee, Cam, have you even watched the episode we're talking about? Because if not, we're gonna have a problem later. And as for the infamous Nome Gusta, well, it's quite obvious. It's an outdated meme. A meme from 2010. How would a 10-year-old know what the Nome Gusta meme is? Especially since nowadays, meme culture has evolved into something brand new. So? Why would that be okay for controversial outrage due to cultural ignorance? Like, if that was the problem with the twerking scene, I could give you credit there because at least there would be something offensive there to base outrage over. Here it's just cringy, outdated meme crap that people got outraged over, even by your own logic. So you can't even help your straw man out. The lack of awareness to pop culture shows in the show's writing. Okay. And how does this prove anything I said to be invalidated? What I said was that people overblew the Jared Shapiro thing very akin to what they did in regards to the twerking scene and the no me gusta me. And all you've proven to me in the past two minutes is that people overblew those scenes into something bigger than it needed to be because of lack of awareness to pop culture. We haven't even gotten into the main meat of my video yet. As for bias, I have to agree with you. People have a tendency to hate reboots because, well, it's a reboot. Just take a look at what happened to the Thundercats reboot. And to the people that say that you hate it because of this, or because you looked at this picture and thought, yep, that was it. I won't take you seriously, and you don't gain my respect. It's been proven that it isn't. However, from the majority who've seen this show, it isn't that good. Mainly the writing as I stated before. What happened with you treating this as a 2017 commentary, Cam? Like, ignoring the fact that this is you essentially using the second half of this interjection to just agree and not much else, you're using information that at the time of my original video didn't exist yet for a pointless side tangent that debunks nothing. Oh, and that ending part about how the writing of the show isn't that good? Guess what's not at all important to the rest of Cam's video? If you guessed the show's writing, good job you owe yourself a Twizzler. And if you don't like Twizzlers, then oh well, you earned one anyway. I should also mention I haven't actually watched any episodes with this character in it. However, with just a little bit of digging, a lot of that 4chan post doesn't add up as they're kind of just jumping to conclusions too quickly, I think. God dang it, Doodle, I thought you were better than this. Researching a character online without actually engaging in the source material is mostly suicidal. You are up against many people who actually watched in game prior knowledge of it. You're going over what people may say about the character and debunking it as, oh, it's just a character, when in 10 seconds you can look up these two pictures and compare them side by side, but more on that in a minute. Did you forget to put in pictures of Jake Goldman and Jared Sapiro, or am I just imagining things? Whatever, I have a much bigger point to be said here because this is exactly the same argument Chrome brought up in his video on me. Look, I don't need to watch a show in order to read writer's credits. If the actual in-show writing played any part at all, then you would have a point. But the information brought up in the original Twitter post was that Jared Shapiro looked like Goodman, was voiced by Goodman, had a similar name to Goodman, and only appeared in episodes Goodman wrote. None of these, by the way, require me to actually watch the show in order to address. Not only that, if you don't research a topic, your video is going to look shady as some points may not be matching up, or take some things out of context, which is something you want to avoid when making commentaries, response videos, etc, and etc. Cool! Good thing I actually show evidence in my video when we actually get into the video itself showing that I did research without having to watch the show, isn't it? Wait for it... So we got a checklist. Obvious self-insert, voice stick, only shows up in episodes Goldman writes. <laughs> Why didn't you just cut that part out then? The little segment while I'm introducing the premise doesn't need to be there if you aren't going to cover it. It just looks sloppy on your end as it doesn't actually connect to the second point in my checklist. He voiced it. So? You guys are aware this is not Jake Goldman's first role, right? It may be his biggest role, but it's certainly not his first time he's ever been in a voice role. He played a character named Saki within a movie called Trouble with Turkle. Now, I haven't seen the movie, nor will I pretend that I have. So, I don't know what this character was in that, but given that Jared isn't his first role, something tells me that they were just looking for a person with his voice range to voice the nerdy little boy. I'm definitely sorry, but what are we discussing again? Powerpuff Girls? What does this movie have to do with it? It's an example to show that Jake has acting credits to show that him voicing Jared really doesn't mean anything. People were taking the fact that Jared was voiced by Jake at face value and didn't bother to think of potential other reasons why the guy might have voiced him. 
If he has an example of previous voice acting credits, then there's a high chance that his vocal range was what they needed. I even explained this in the context you play. Or to be more precise, how does this correlate to him not being a self-insert for the Powerpuff reboot? Because from what I got out of this, it doesn't seem to add up. It may be great if you voice acted a character in a cartoon and then got credited for it, but this doesn't really make sense. We're dealing with a guy here who wrote himself into the Powerpuff cartoon in 2017, but this point doodle hurts your credibility by a long shot. How? I'm merely bringing up a counter-argument that just because Jake voiced Shapiro, that doesn't mean that he's a self-insert and use the trouble with Turkle as an example as to why. This shouldn't hurt my credibility, but all I'm saying is that it seems people were jumping to conclusions too quickly because of the voice credits. Also, it would have been great if he voiced a character in a cartoon and got the voice credit. Dude, I swear to god I've heard this point before and it was retarded then too. It's still a voice role, Cam. It shouldn't matter if it was a movie or an episodic cartoon. It's still an animated piece of work that Jake lent his voice talents to, still giving him the voice credit, and could have then led to him voicing Shapiro in the Powerpuff Girls. What the fuck do you mean it doesn't add up? Oh, and also, also, I love how you snuck in that little he wrote himself in point after you skipped the very part of the video where I demonstrate how it's not a self-insert. That's very sneaky of you, Cam, but I'm on to you. You ain't slick. Are we really back to your skip card hurting your point? What are you, Nightmare Kagami? You're skipping over a very vital point that shows Jared Shapiro wasn't even created by Goodman as he wasn't the writer for the first episode Shapiro appears in. Thus negating the idea that Jared only appears in episode Jake's right for, and also really staggers the idea that he was a self-insert at all. Because if he wasn't even created by Jake, how could it have been Jake that stuck himself in? This hurts the previous point immediately after it finishes. Are you real? I would go through other examples to see if these two aren't the only ones people miss, but honestly, I just got through binge-watching six episodes of My Little Pony for a point. I ain't doing it for Powerpuff Girls. Doodle, no, you shouldn't do that again. You will ruin its credibility even more. Why? How could this happen to me? Way to take that part of the point out of context, Cam. I really appreciate it. In all seriousness, though, if I could find just two episodes off the bat of Jared appearing without the help of Goodman, without having watched the thing, why does this hurt my credibility? All I'm doing is not providing extra proof that would have forwarded my overarching point. I already provided evidence to my statement being true, anything extra would have just been padding. He looks like the guy, seems to be the next complaint. Right, because curly hair and glasses can only belong to one guy, right? No, you shouldn't just make assumptions like that. Curly hair and glasses don't mean shit and you know it. This was obviously designed this way on purpose due to the nature of the character being a nerdy stereotype. Come on guys, this shouldn't be that hard. In many different cartoons, nerdy characters have different appearances. But does that change the fact that curly hair and glasses are nerdy stereotypes? No? Then what does this change? Doodle, I know this character wants to be the nerdy stereotype. However, when you compare these two images, you can see a lot of similarities between the two. And that is why I can fully understand why this character could be a self-insert back in 2017. A lot of similarities. You mean two. Unless you got more, then let's hear them. Let's bring up these two images again, and let's see if we can compare them side by side. The hairstyle between the two looks similar, so that's a check. They both have glasses, but they have the same shape in them, so that's also a check. Do you see what I'm saying? No! I don't. Especially since all you brought up was curly hair and glasses, the two very things I just disregarded as an assumption at best. Okay, technically you brought up hairstyle and glasses shape. But one, I don't see how the hairstyles are the same and Shapiro's hair is significantly more Goku and looks like standard bit of combed curly hair given how Shapiro is facing. And Goodman's hair is obviously more styled to part his hair to the right. Which, even in the pictures of Shapiro facing a similar way to Goodman, we don't see on him. And as for glasses shape, well that's even less of evidence because square glasses are a very common shape. Sure, there is also round glasses if you're a little bit planet character or like any of my characters demonstrate. But look up glasses just in general and you'll find far more square glasses than round ones. So, how that's evidence is beyond me. The suspicions as to why people think that it is a self-insert are really there. Even if one of the artists and writers say that it was a simple joke, doesn't it seem creepy to you? No, obviously not, else I wouldn't be defending it as mere coincidence. You have done nothing to provide any extra information regarding the points the Twitter post had shown that Shapiro is a Goodman self-insert. Anything you had brought up has so far been the exact same shit that I've addressed as presumptuous. 
Now, I skipped over the personality point that Doodle makes in the video just to come back to it later on, and well, it's later. First of all, how is it obvious? Is there a lot of personality traits given to Jared that Jake also has? How would anyone know this? Do you know Jake Goldman personally and see a bunch of similarities between him and the character? Although we haven't met the dude specifically, his character design is based around him. We don't have to learn about his personality, we can just like figure it out from there. No! No, 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 you cannot be this dense. A self-insert, by the name even, requires you to be inserting yourself into the story. The personality is one of the more vital parts about a self-insert. So unless we know that Shapiro and Goodman share similar traits to this personality, we cannot claim the former as an obvious self-insert to the latter. Which, by the way, was the point that I was making that you're taking out of context again! Second aspect of this that you are obviously overlooking is one of the very things you skipped over, being that Jared didn't debut in an episode that Goodman wrote for. You even acknowledged you had agreed with this point in your skip card text, but somehow we're going to ignore that and still claim self-insert onto Shapiro. I have never seen someone be so dishonest with their video, to the point it actually drove me to shouting at my computer the first viewing. Normally it takes two or three. Also, don't you fucking dare use that interview on me. Your Powerpuff Girl. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna say Blossom 100%. Oh. oh no, easily, 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 because I think uh, if I had the hair for bows, I would wear them all the time. We can just write off that Goodman is playing around. His reasoning for liking Blossom is because of her bow and not actually her character. And it's not even because of her bow, it's because if he had hair that could give him a reason to wear a bow, he would. This proves nothing about him actually liking Blossom as a Powerpuff, and even if it was, there's only three to choose from. There's a 33% chance of choosing her. You are right, we don't have to judge a character based on the book. But however, if we dig deeper into that, we can see suspicions that this character is possibly a self-insert. No doubt about it. Okay. But where the fuck is this deeper evidence? All you've given us thus far is he looks like Shapiro. That is only skin deep. If there's extra evidence that proves that Shapiro is more of a self-insert, the Twitter post didn't bring it up, and to be honest, neither have you. In fact, that's the key thing I'm asking for in the segment. Evidence that Shapiro is the same as his supposed real-life counterpart. This is retarded. And that's not even mentioning the fact one of the storyboard designers came out and straight up said, no, it's not a self-insert. It was designed this way with him in mind, but it's not what you think. Apparently, the Powerpuff Girls crew writes themselves for a lot of harmless cameos as a joke. And Jared's no exception. Uh, Doodle? I think you're confused about what a cameo means. Cameos are one-time things. If a cameo goes on for like 10 episodes at a time, then it's not a cameo, it's just a baseline for a character. Yes to the author! Also, don't lecture me on what the fuck a cameo is. Jared is not a main character, he's barely even a secondary character. Even as of my original video, there was at least 48 episodes to the show with Jared appearing in 7 of them. It just seems to be a background character with a name and a voice, Spongebob does that too. A cameo just implies a small character part in a play or movie, played by a distinguished voice actor or a celebrity. His is on the larger cameo side of things, but it's still a cameo. Besides, my point was them having characters that looked like crew was common and that they were singling this one out because drama. At that point, the joke stops being funny and then it transcends beyond that into, well, what we have now. If the character was going to appear once to execute a joke perfectly, then that would be perfect on its own. But having this character around for 10 episodes simultaneously even more, it starts to become creepy and at best, scary. We are dealing with an adult who likes Blossom, who at best is a child, and writing himself in to make her a love interest. An adult writing himself in for a child. Do you think the suspicions are not enough? Obviously not, else I wouldn't have made my video asking for more concrete evidence. Now, normally I don't cover final thoughts, and while Cam's are a special breed of fuck where he tries discrediting my entire video because the source is 4chan, when I even pointed out that others were using this source to hate the show as a whole, says that I bring no evidence to my video when most of my arguments were asking for more concrete proof of the character being a self-insert, and then just devolves into his opinion of the show which is worthless, like, why is this here in the final thoughts? I don't have anything I really care to get into the nitty gritty about as his final thoughts are damn near two minutes, so I'm skipping the mine. Cam, boy you fucked up big time. 
This is the worst response to that commentary because while Karome's video blatantly ignored what I was trying to say in my video, at least he addressed how I fucked up my last point abhorrently. And while Dale's video was garbage in his own right, at least he was honest about it and saying that because I didn't watch the show I had no room to speak. You took out context, played the video out of order arbitrarily confusing the audience, and making your video a structural mess, continued to persist that the topic was an obvious self-insert regardless of how my argument asked for more concrete examples, and kept just forcing that belief onto my video without debunking a thing. You know, on top of saying that I had no room to speak because I didn't watch the episodes, and ignoring everything else I said. I don't want to call this malicious, but to call this dishonest is an understatement. And I hope to hell you aren't about to go down this path where this is normal for you to do this. I'd also severely bring up the advice to stop dragging yourself out. Those final thoughts mean nothing to me, as why would I care about what your opinion is of the Powerpuff Girls reboot? I noticed you did that in your other commentary, the one on Madison the Cat or MTC commentates, where you spend like half the video explaining your thoughts about Mary Sue's. <sighs> Alright, I need to calm the fuck down. I had fun covering this despite how heated I got, it's been a long time since I felt this out of video, so I guess I can thank you for that. But no, in all seriousness, don't be dishonest with your videos and maybe summarize context better, my dude. I hope you have a good day, and take care.